Hello there! Stefan and Martin here from Schildwache Potsdam. Today to bring you the third and final part on provocations. Provocations, that's not throwing insults, but it's provoking our opponent to either attack us or to get us an advantage to then strike them. We present you here the provocations from Porta di Ferro Stretta, so the inside guard with a point forward uh, sword towards the right knee, which is along with Gola Longa Stretta, one of the most common you will encounter when fencing with the single-handed sword, the side sword of the 16th century. So, like I said in the last video, the provocations can either provoke the opponent to attack you or to get you into a positional advantage. And the first two are just, as in the last videos, are going to do just that. Remember, in comparison to Colorange Stretta, you're now with the sword on the inside, so mainly the open space is onto the outside, so your dominant side as a right hand on my right side. From here, I want to beat the opponent's sword with a falso manco, so a false edge cut from my left, opening up their arm, striking a mandrito towards their arm, and then retreating. Okay, so that's the first provocation. If we are out here, I open them, I strike towards the arm and I get out there. Okay, second one, really similar once again, just like in Coda Longa Stretta, seems like Giovanni della Gocchi had a system, is a beat towards a sword with a mezzo reverso, so again a, a blow, now with a true edge from my, from my left side, into an imbarcata, an overhand thrust. So from here, I beat their sword towards my outside and then thrust towards either the head, their neck or their chest. Okay, let's see that in fluent motion. And I'm here. Cover yourself and get out. Okay, the next bit is a bit more complex in that I have again my provocation visor via mezzo mandrito, but now I'm stepping towards my left, thrusting a punta reversa, basically a kind of duplion out of the German tradition, okay? So I provoke a strong reaction of my opponent where their point is lifting up, where I can then thrust behind their blade. Okay, not with my true edge towards their blade, as usually, but with my false edge, angling around their defense. So, so in slow motion, I step in, I step around, and if my opponent is here, this lands way longer, as if I would have tried this with the imbrocata from uh, just of the previous example. So I go in, get around, and if they parry this, they have to parry really wide, which then opens them up for the Drito Tondo, which you have seen in the intro of this video. So let's see this in fluent motion once again as well. If the Punta Reversa lands, of course I'll take that. So it's once again provocation via a beat, getting an advantageous position, using that position to strike them. If they parry this as well, well, they need to take a really big tempo, a big motion, opening them up onto the other side. The next provocation is a feint. A really typical feint because Giovanni de Lagocchia describes that we want our opponent to lift the head, lift the hand to protect the head. And that is a provocation from Porta di Ferrostretta with a Drito Tramazzone. So, this seems kind of dangerous, right? If I just lift my hand up here and they just stick their point out, hmm, not the best idea. So what you want to do is to work for that opening. Basically, your footwork has to take care of the opponent's blade not pointing towards you anymore. And what I really like to do here is to step towards their outside, because if I strike from here, they only have the good and direct option to lift their blade, okay? So I want that, that reaction getting out here, 
step in here and this is, should be now the feint, okay? So this is a feint to draw their defenses up for me to then strike low. Okay, we are here. I go up, go low and then I cover myself and get out there. Okay, once again in Flunhosch. Okay, the last one is one of the more, uh, let's say, subtle ways of provoking and is again nicely reflected in the last one I presented to you for Kula Longa Estreta as well. And that is a simple overbind, but now it's on the outside. So from Porta di Ferro, I turn my edge, my true edge towards the opponent, shutting them out step in and thrust a punta dritta or maybe even a punta, uh, an imbrocata towards the opponent. Dalagoki doesn't really specify it here, but I think the most probable is like a guardia d'entrare like position. So from here, I use the false edge of my opponent to get that leverage, turn the blade and get in here. Once again, like in a steeper angle, so you can see that overbinding action. So I get in here, Due to my blade pointing towards the opponent's left, this sideways way pressure is sliding towards my, my forte, my, the strong of my blade, getting me that leverage advantage for me to strike then that punta dritta. Okay, once more. So from here, and now I'm in there, and on the way out, you should cover the opponent's blade, of course. We really hope you enjoyed these provocations and these give you a really nice and safe way for you to approach your opponent that are in these low point forward guards. Of course, Giovanni Dallagocchia has a lot more provocations also for other guards, but it has to be said, they are mostly like these point forward guards or a point forward guard from a high position. So if you want to see more of that, you'll have to leave us a comment because for now I want to progress in the series and next time we talk about tempo or motion and timing. Okay, so I hope, well, we hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, you can really help us a lot by uh, liking this video, sharing and subscribing to the channel. If you want to help us even more, you can head over to patreon.com. And until next time, take care and ciao.